Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor John Pope from Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, and we want to welcome you to another session of the Worship Hour. You know, our God is an awesome God, and when we come to the house of God, we want to lift him up, we want to magnify him, and we want to glorify him. So today, as we get ready for worship, as you get ready for worship, I want you to free your heart, free your mind, look to the hills, and let's give God some glory. Come on, everybody. Let's go to church. They said I wouldn't be here today. They said I wouldn't be here today. They said I'd never amount to anything.
chapter 3. And when you get down to chapter 3, I want you to take a look at verse number 4. Amen. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. You're searching for it. If you see Matthew, just keep going on to the right. If you see Mark, Luke, and John, keep on going to the right. You see Acts, First, Second Corinthians, keep on going to the right. Get the Romans, amen. Keep on going to the right. Get the Galatians and Ephesians and Philippians. Keep on, and then you get there. Amen, 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 amen. You just go on through those, go on through those, and then God will take you to the place where he wants you to be. Amen. And today, he wants us to be in Philippians chapter 3. Amen. And when you have it, would you stand in reverence to the reading of the word of God? Amen. 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 Instead of verse 4, I'm going to start with verse 3. If you need me to hold on before I start reading, you can say, wait a minute, preacher, and I'll wait for you. Because I want us to all be with one accord. Amen. Amen. We're coming into a new year. And my sister said, well, I'm looking for God to do something different in 2024. Amen? Amen. Amen. Not just lip service, but actual difference. Amen. 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 I'll read from the New King James Version. I have a few passages that I need to read. But we've got to read them because we've got to set the tone for the message. Amen? Amen. For we are the circumcision who worship God in spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh. If anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church. Concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I had already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. I'm glad Christ laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, one thing I do, Forgetting those things which are behind. Somebody hold on to that. And reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Hold on to that. I press. Somebody hold on to that. Toward the goal. Somebody's Bible said toward the mark. For the prize of the upward call. Somebody's Bible said the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, 
to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. Paul says, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I've been in your hearing from Philippians chapter 3. Verses 3 through 16. May God add a blessing to the readers and the hearers and the doers of his holy word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Over the next few moments, what I'd like to talk with you about this morning as we move into 2024 is your game plan for success. Y'all know how it is when you get ready, when a team gets ready to go out, they got to have a game plan. And it's no different than for the believer. Brother uh, Joseph, Brother Carlos, you guys got to have a game plan for success. Amen? Amen. Saints of God, we have to have a game plan for success. So I'm going to give you three simple principles that tie into your game plan. This is what you got to do. Moving for success in 2024. Number one, forget. forget. Number two, reset. reset. And number three, progress. progress. All right, that's your title for the day. Uh -huh. forget, forget, reset, reset. and progress. Yes. Amen. 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 Let us have a word of prayer. Father God, I just come to you now in the name of your son, Jesus, just to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Holy Spirit, I want to thank you for being here with us. I want to thank you that you watch over us, that you teach us, lead us, and guide us. As we go into this word today, Holy Spirit, I pray for your empowerment right now. And I ask you, dear Heavenly Father, that if you would, as you teach, give us all ears to hear, a heart to perceive, and a mind to do what thus saith the Lord. Help us, O oh God to do what you've called us to do and be who you want us to be. These and many other things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're almost there. It's December the 31st, 2023, and we're getting ready to move into 2024. And lest I forget, it's also a time where family thinks about family. And I want to let you know that we have... Um, one family member that says, could you let everybody know that my sister Analea has a birthday on tomorrow? She's looking out for her little baby sister, and she wants everybody to be able to celebrate her sister's birthday on tomorrow. When we think about moving into 2024, we want to think about family. We want to think about being one. We want to think about how God has brought us together. We didn't bring ourselves together. God has brought us together. And as God has brought us together, we are looking forward to moving into 2024. But when we get to 2024, when the clock rolls around tonight, and I pray all of you will come out and have a, a celebrate with us at the watch night service tonight at 10 over at St. Paul Baptist. When the clock rolls us into 2024, we can expect some new challenges. We can expect some new opportunities. And unfortunately, some of us may still have to deal with some old issues. But the year, I want you to think about this, and I want you to put this in the forefront of your mind. The year that's ahead of you can be greater for each of us individually and collectively. Somebody say collectively. collectively. I, I like that collectively because we can operate as one. We need to operate as one because if you look in the book of Philippians and you look in chapter 3, what you're going to find is that the apostle Paul is instructing the church in ways to develop a stronger relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Somebody say relationship. Relationship. 
Look at your neighbor, say relationship. relationship. Look at your other neighbor, say relationship. relationship. Now look to heaven to say relationship. relationship. Yeah, see, we need, we need to have those relationships on all levels. Amen. Amen. We need to have that relationship because there are many <laughs> false teachers who were trying to persuade the church at Philippi uh -huh. to abandon their faith in Jesus uh -huh. and return to Judaism. Uh -huh. And I got to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, it's no different today. Oh, it's no different today because there's many people who will attack the church. Uh -huh. They will attack the church as an institution. Yes. They will attack the church leadership. They will attack our faith in Christ because they want us to abandon our relationship with God in Christ Jesus. And what they want us to do is to embrace the worldly principles all around us. But in spite of whatever criticism that we might receive as a church, God has a plan for us. And that plan for us is to draw nigh unto him. And he said he in turn will draw nigh unto us. That word, that word uh, nigh means near. He's ready to draw near to us, but he wants us also to draw near to him. But how are we going to get that closer walk with the Lord? Well, I want to tell you that what we can do is we look at our game plan of forget, reset, and progress. We can look at several sub-elements such as we got to learn to disregard self-righteousness. We got to destroy emotional clutter. And we got to drive forward in Christ. We have to disregard self-righteousness, destroy emotional clutter, and drive forward in Christ. You see, we've got a goal this coming year. Uh -huh. And that goal is to make some fundamental changes in the way that, uh, in, in the value that we place on our relationship with Jesus Christ, Thank you. on the value that we place in our relationship with one another. Yes. And also, we have to make a fundamental change in the commitment that we make to honoring God. Yes. Hallelujah. Somebody say commitment. Amen. Yeah, we got to make some changes in, in, in what we are committed to, who we are committed to, and why we are committed. My brothers and my sisters, I like the way that Paul, if you read this uh, passage in Philippians 3 very closely, one thing that you will find out is Paul absolutely loved the Lord. If you go back into chapter 2 and chapter 1, you'll find that Paul not only wanted to uh, be close to the Lord, but he wanted to share in the suffering of Jesus Christ. Because Paul was looking forward to the time of the resurrection just as Jesus was raised from the dead. He was looking forward to the time that he was going to be raised and he would be able to receive all of the blessings that God has in store for him. But if we are going to move forward in 2024. We are going to move higher in 2024. One of the things that we have to do is to forget some old things. We, 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 we got to forget some old things. Paul said, look, I'm, I'm going to forget those things that are behind me. I'm going to disregard all of the self-righteous attitude that I had. I'm going to forget some things that are behind me. You know, there's a number of people that always wanted to challenge Paul's credentials about being an apostle of Jesus Christ. And instead of just lying down and taking the abuse, in Philippians 3, Paul says, listen, they can brag and boast all they want to, but if anybody's got anything to brag and boast about, I got something to brag and boast about. Paul says, I'm going to stop that just for a minute. I'm just going to give you a peek at my credentials. I, I, I want you to understand my heritage. I want you to understand that I was born a Jew into the Jewish family. And don't you know that as I was born a Jew, that I'm part of the chosen nation, the ones that God chose? 
Don't you know that as a as a Jew that I was I was circumcised on the eighth day? Yeah. Oh, you might not find it in the word, but I came from that that place called Tarsus. And Tarsus was a city where there was wealth. Oh, mom and daddy had money, y'all. Don't you know that I was a part of the Pharisees? I was a part of the group that was set apart? Don't you know that I had the mission of being zealous for God by persecuting the church? You got to know who I am. I'm going to give you a peek at my credentials. Don't you know that according to the law, I followed all of the rules of the law and I was blameless. Paul says, if you want some credentials, I'll show you my credentials. But then Paul says, in spite of all of that stuff, and the fact that if I wanted to hold on to that stuff, that I could become a very prominent citizen in the community, I look at all that stuff as just rubble. Right. Paul said that's nothing, that's nothing but garbage. Because that's a that's a form, all of that stuff that we try to hold on to is nothing more than, than a righteousness that comes by works. And none of that stuff. It's going to get me any closer to Jesus. Well, I want to tell somebody we can take a lesson from Paul and, and not allow our past achievements to make our heads swell up and get big. Hallelujah. Don't, 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 don't look at all your stuff that you've done in the past and get the big head. Amen. Don't be getting the big head because I want to tell you something that getting the big head is not going to help us get any closer to Jesus. I, I, I'm thankful that, that, that God has opened up doors for us here at Galilee, but that's just stuff. I'm thankful that, that, that God has given us ministry opportunities here at Galilee, but that's just stuff. See, we can't look at all of the things that we have done because that's a salvation by works, and we're not trying to focus in on a salvation by works. We're trying to focus in on getting the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We got to learn to disregard those self-righteous things. Paul says in Philippians 3.13 that he is going to forget the things behind and reach forward to the things that are before him. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for the blessings of yesterday. Hallelujah. But I'll tell you what, I'm not going to sit back on yesterday's blessings. Hallelujah. I'm not going to sit back on the bread that God gave me yesterday. I want some fresh bread that comes right out of the spiritual oven. Hallelujah. That fresh bread that's going to be sweet to the taste bud. Hallelujah. I'm not going to sit back on yesterday's blessing. I'm not going to stand still and, and glow about what we did yesterday because I want to tell you something. Today, there's a new group of people that are hurting. Today, there's a new group of people that are lost in sin and need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today, there's a new group of people that need spiritual help. So we don't have time to sit back and gloat on yesterday's blessing. We got to forget those things which are behind. We got to disregard all thoughts of self-righteousness because if we hold on to yesterday's blessings, we're going to miss today's opportunities. We'll miss today's opportunities. And I want to tell somebody that the more you focus on yesterday, you can never get to the point where God is trying to get you to reset so that you can get into the blessings for today. See, if you focused on yesterday, I want to tell you what. How many of you have seen that show, Hoarders? You know, people got all that junk in their house, right? Some folks got so much junk in the house, they got to climb over top of it to, to get from one room to the next. Well, I want to tell you, some of us are like hoarders. Hallelujah. We are holding on to some old junk in our lives. And because we are holding on to that junk in our lives, we are, we are hindered and bound by emotional club. Your arms are bound up. Your heart is bound up. Your mind is bound up. And you can't receive anything from God because you're so 
so bound up by the old junk that's in your life right now. You keep saying, I want to see God, but you can't look past the junk. The junk dominates your, your, your eyesight. The junk dominates your thinking. When we look at who we are, and we look back over our lives, one of the things that we normally do when we look back is we look back and we see all of the failure in our life. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And as we look at all of the failure in our life, we begin to say, I can't do When we look back over our lives, we see the, 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 how people have hurt us and, and how we have been rejected. And all we do is walk around with a feeling and a spirit of rejection. And we say, nobody wants me. Nobody wants me. And we look back and, 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 and we see those things and, and, and we look and, and we see because that failure breeds fear. And because we are so fearful, we are paralyzed in one place. We can't get to where God wants us to be because we're too afraid to move. We're afraid that if we move, that we're going to fall down and fail again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're afraid that if we try to go get some help, they're going to reject us. Yes, yes. And they're going to kick us out. Come on, Come on. All that emotional clutter yes, yes. has got you bound up. Yes. And you can't do anything. Yes. You can't move left. You can't move right. Yes. And the devil's just whispering in your left ear. The devil's whispering in your right ear. And you can't hear anything. You got folks that are trying to encourage you. But the emotional clutter. They can't get through the emotional clutter. You got God trying to send your angels to give you some relief. But you can't hear anything. You can't receive anything. Because you're bound up by the emotional clutter. God said it's time to destroy the emotional club. For all of you that are going through, I want you to know that emotional club causes, causes us to be centered on self instead of our focus being centered on God. And as long as we are centered on self, we'll never be able to move past where we are because all we see are the limitations of self. But God has a way yeah. of breaking through the emotional clutter. God has a way where we can destroy the emotional clutter. God has a way to where we can break down all of those barriers that exist between us and somebody else. Whoever the somebody is. God said, I want to break down some barriers. Because what the Lord is doing is, is God says instead of being self-focused, it's time to get God-focused. Pastor, I don't know how. Here's what I want you to adopt. If you can hear me through the emotional clutter, I want you to start saying this word to yourself. Reset. Reset. I'm getting ready to reset. I'm getting ready to break some stuff down. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm tired of walking in yeah. loneliness. Yeah. I'm tired of feeling like it's just me all by myself. Oh, Reset. Yeah. It's time for something new. Oh, God, yeah. help me to reset. Yeah. And God said, I can help you to reset. Yeah. Watch this. Come on, help Instead of locking on, to the thought that you are a failure. Uh -huh. Let me give you something from the word of God. 2 Corinthians 3 and 5 says this. Uh -huh. Not 
that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as our, of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. See, what Paul is saying, instead of trying to focus on the spirit of failure, Think about how sufficient you are in God's ability, not in your own ability. When you've got God on your side, you can climb over mountains. When you've got God on your side, you can be able to make it through sickness. When you've got God on your side, you can hold on in the midst of the storm. When you've got God on your side, God says, I'll be the light at the end of the tunnel. God said, not only will I be the light at the end of the tunnel, but I'll give you strength to walk through the tunnel to get to the light. You got to reset, reset, reset. Don't focus on that, that, that failure. Don't, don't focus on the spirit of fear. Proverbs 16 and 3 reminds us that to commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Somebody hold on to this word because you're going through. Yeah. You're going through and you're trying to figure out how you can reset. You're trying to figure out how you can get closer to God. God said if you bring, if you commit your work, somebody's got to make a commitment. Oh, That's what made Paul so great. 
Paul says, listen, I have been apprehended. Oh, I wish, one sister Wanda, I wish you had your handcuffs here. I'd better tie me up right now because I've been apprehended by Jesus. Anybody want to be apprehended by Jesus? Because when you get apprehended by Jesus, you ain't got time for the mess of the world because all you focus on is glorifying God. All you focus on is lifting up the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Reset your thinking. Reset your thinking. Reset your thinking. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That is not enough. To forget about that self-righteousness, you know, yesterday's stuff. It's not enough just to reset your thinking. Because if you don't move forward, you're going to be in the same place that you are in. we got to drive forward in Christ Jesus. Paul says, I have a divine calling. Hallelujah. Thank you. And the, the more I study this thing, the more I study this thing, I'm about to fall out of my seat. I got happy. And I wanted to praise God. Matter of fact, I did praise God. I wanted to shout. Matter of fact, I did shout. Hallelujah. Right there in the office, I praise God because Paul said, not only am I going to forget, I'm not going to focus on yesterday, not only am I going to reset, not going to change my thinking, but Paul said, now I'm getting ready to press, hallelujah, I'm getting ready to press toward the mark, I'm getting ready to be like the runners in the old uh, Grecian days, I'm getting ready to get on the line. And the runners in the Grecian days, brother, brother, they didn't have all these track shoes with these nice spikes and all that other stuff. These boys ran around barefoot. Hallelujah. All according to some, they didn't have on any clothes either. They just ran around doing these races. But when these boys were running a race, what they were looking for, they were looking to get the prize at the end. They didn't look left. They didn't look right. They didn't look behind them. They just focused on getting to the prize. Anybody in here focusing on getting the prize? Anybody in here pressing for the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus? Don't you know you got a calling on your life? Yes. You got a calling on your life? You got a calling on your life? You got a calling? You got a calling on your life? God says, I have some spiritual blessings in store for you. He says, I've released some. I've released some right now because I've given you the Holy Spirit to help you to walk through. I've given you the Holy Spirit to teach you. I've given you the Holy Spirit to sanctify you, to make you holy. My brothers and my sisters, we got some, we have a part to play. You can't sit down and just be a cute, a cute Christian. That's right. That's right. Amen. When we talk about working in the church, right. some folks look and say, well, I've been working for the last 35 years. <laughs> Let somebody else do it now. If you ain't dead, you still call to work. If you still living, you still call to work. Your work might be a little bit different, but God has called you to work. Because there's a day when Christ is going to come. Paul said that he had not attained perfection yet. He was not complete in him yet. But I want to let you know that he was looking forward to the day when he would be perfected. Paul realized that God had already given him some spiritual gifts. And I want to tell everybody in here that all of you, if you are a child of the living God, you got a spiritual gift. I don't care how tall you are. I don't care how short you are. I don't care how dark you are. I don't care how light you are. I don't care how curly your hair is. I don't care how straight your hair is. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care about your family background. Because you, if you've been adopted into the family of the living God, we're all part of the same family now. We all have the same father. And so thankful that we are now children of the living God. And as we are 
children of the living God. God wants us to stand up. Stand up for righteousness. God doesn't want us to sit down on our gifts. Hallelujah. God wants us to stand up. Because when we come to the house of God, we come to praise and lift him up. We come to be rejuvenated. We come to be reminded. We come and say, Lord, here I am, Jesus. Lord, I come to praise you. Lord, I know you got something better for me. Come on, God. Pour into me today. Hallelujah. I know that 2024 is right around the corner. But somebody can get a blessing today. Just throw your hands up and say, Lord, I need a blessing right now. That's the beauty of having to serve, having to serve our God. You can call on him on Monday. You can call him on Tuesday. You can call him throughout the week to get the blessing that you need. You ain't got to wait till you get to 721 West 19th Street. God is already ready to bless you. God said, listen, y'all. I need you to just draw nigh unto me. I need you to draw nigh unto me. Because I'm going to draw nigh unto you. I'm going to embrace you. I'm going to link up with you. We're going to be one. I'm going to do something for you that you never expected. I'm going to bless you in ways that you never experienced it before. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. And I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to be here. And I'm going to help you through. I'm going to be here. Watch me bless you. Anybody need a blessing on today? I don't know who you are, but God knows who you are. If you want something new in 2024, yeah, 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 yeah. we got to forget. Yeah. We got to reset. Yeah. And we got to progress. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. But remember, in forgetting, don't focus on your self righteousness. I know you look good. You don't even need dippity doo to put on your hair. You just throw a little water on it and it just curls up. Hallelujah. I know that you feel good. Hey, Amen. You jumped up this morning. Hello, world. How y'all doing? Hallelujah. I know that when you go out, everybody say, how you doing? Good to see you. Amen. But don't focus on all that stuff. Focus on Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Focus on Jesus Christ and him being crucified for you. Focus on the fact that your Lord got up with all power in his hand. Hallelujah! My God is a good God and he is worthy to be praised. Reset your thinking. Reset your thinking. Get rid of the emotional club. Every time, come here. Every time the devil tries to push you away from your brother and your sister. I like that. Look at that. She pushed me back. She said, uh-uh. You're not going to separate us. Because Jesus prayed in John chapter 17. That we would be one with another. Every time the devil tries to think of, give you a negative thought about your brother and sister. You say, I rebuke that thought in the name of Jesus Christ. So every time the devil tries to drag you down. Come here, brother. Jesus. Come here, come here, come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time uh -huh. you see your sister uh -huh. rising higher, hold yeah, her hand up. Yeah, yeah. Hold her hand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the world gonna tell you to do is drag her hand down. But instead of dragging her hand down, you hold her hand up. And then you try to hold her higher. And say, God, just as you blessed her, I believe that you're gonna bless me. Come on, God. Keep on blessing them. Because that overflow blessing is coming my way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil try to do anything. Don't give him a foothold. Don't give him anything in your life. So we're going into 2024. Grab somebody's hand. Grab somebody's hand. Everybody grab somebody's hand. Grab somebody's hand. Grab somebody's hand. Grab somebody's hand. We're going to fight the good fight. Yes, we are. Yeah. We're going to fight the good fight. Yeah. 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 
We're going to fight the good fight. Yes. Does yes. everybody have somebody's hand? Yes. Does everybody have somebody's hand? Yes. Brother Jimmy, you ain't got nobody's hand. Hey man, I need you, I need you, sister Beauty, we'll go there and do something. To get, yeah. get, 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 get his hand, get his yeah. hand. Yeah. See, that's, that's the thing. We can't leave anybody out. We yeah. can't leave anybody out. Yeah. We're all in this thing together. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We're all in this thing together. We got to remember who yeah. we are. We are children of the living God. God is not dead. Our God is yet alive. We got to remember who we are. We are princes and we are princes and we are kings. Hallelujah. That's how God said so. Not because man said so. You don't belong to the devil. The devil has no claim on you. Don't you know he got his eviction papers and got kicked out? Hallelujah. God kicked him out. Hallelujah. We got a people that know how gotta learn how to praise God in yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. We want to do something amazing. Yeah. There you go. There you go. I knew you'd catch it. I knew you'd catch it. That's right. Hold those hands up. Hold those hands up. Magnify the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Glory to your name, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Glory yeah. to your holy name, Father. Yeah. We magnify you, God. Yeah. All over this house, we lift you up, God. Yeah. For you are worthy, you are worthy to be praised. God, may you be blessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would take your people through every situation this year. God, as they look at 2024, as it comes in, let us come in, dear Heavenly Father, praising you, dear Heavenly Father. And as it comes in, dear Heavenly Father, we show us trials and tribulation. Try to come our way, dear Heavenly Father, help us to hold to your unchanging hand. Oh God, we just call out our Father. We call on you right now in the name of Jesus. There's a blessing in this house. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the living God is already here. Hallelujah. He is healing right now. Hallelujah. He is making provision right now. Hallelujah. He's restoring relationships right now in this house. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Give God a shout right now. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Let's make 2024 the time where we see what we can do for God. And I want to encourage you. You don't have to do everything for everybody. But this is what I'm going to tell you. What God has placed in your hand. I want you to do that thing well. What God has placed in your hand, you do that thing well. Yeah, yeah. And what he's placed in my hand, I'm going to do that thing well. Yeah. And when we put our hands together, Amen. Ooh, Amen. we're going to scare Amen. some Amen. demons. Amen. Hallelujah. Because we're going to be like Nehemiah and the people built in the wall. We're going to build some spiritual wall. Hallelujah. We're going to bring restoration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying your blessing over my brother right now. Yes, I'm praying to Heavenly Father that you would touch him. You know how he needs to be touched right now. I'm praying that you would bless him. And that you would lead him to that place in the spiritual realm yeah, Lord. where he will see, hear, yeah. and feel your presence. Yeah. Loose. Yeah. Bless him. Yeah. Bind him. Yeah. Everything that is against you right yeah. now. Yeah. 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 Let your power go forth. Yeah. Touch now in the name of Jesus. Touch now in the name of Jesus. Touch now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We want to get it going right. Thank you. One of you beautiful people with one of those beautiful voices.
just gonna start start singing thank you now. Why don't you get off? Because I'm listening to this group. good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. I want to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, we thank God for the Holy Spirit being here with us on today. Our God truly, truly was blessing us. So what do we do? As people of God, we have to always make sure that we want to be obedient to the Lord. We want to always walk in faith, just trusting that whatever God says, God will do. God can bring healing to our lives. God can bring deliverance to our lives. If we will walk with him, he definitely will walk with us. My brothers and my sisters, we thank you for joining us today. And we pray that as you come and if you're here in San Angelo, that you would drop by 721 West 19th Street. And you will worship with us at either our Wednesday night Bible study at 6.15 p.m., our Sunday morning Sunday school at 9 a.m., or the worship hour at 10 a.m. We would love to have the opportunity to love on you. Prayers that God will bless you, that God will keep you. Have a very blessed day.